attention, please. Thank you for coming. We're very fortunate this evening to have with us Mr. Neely Fuller, who has written a book whose, let me read it so I get it right, <laughs> whose title throws me as, as well as some of the books. It's called a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and our action for victims of, racist, of racism. That's white supremacy. Now, anybody who's not such a victim can leave now. <laughs> but anyway, as always, it's, it's a subject that's vital to us. So we have a man who has put his mind to it for some years and put it into a wonderful book. So I hope you're welcome, Brother Neely Fuller. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Rich. Now, can you hear me? Basically, all the way back, can you hear me? Okay. I want to talk about maybe the ingredients in this book, which I put in there. And I'm the author of the book. I had a little problem getting it out, of course, it's sort of a homemade draft copy. And I gave it a title some years ago called The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. That doesn't mean anything at all. <laughs> so you look at the subtitle. I mean, it means something, but it only means something to me if you haven't heard me talk about it. The subtitle is a textbook, textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism. I describe racism as white supremacy. I describe white supremacy as racism. And I say a lot of unorthodox things in this book because in order to fight racism, or eliminate it rather, not just fight it, but actually eliminate it, you have to use unorthodox methods. Now what does that mean? That means it's something that's not been tried before. Now, a lot of things have been tried before, but whatever has been tried before hasn't worked, including what's in this book, because it hasn't been tried before. We only know what will work when it works, and what doesn't work when it doesn't work, trial and error. And I'd like to say in connection with that, okay, why bother with racism? Let's just start off with that. Uh, Shouldn't we, t shouldn't we be talking about drugs and poverty and all like this? Well, I have a basic premise, and that's on the back of the book. And somewhere on the back it says, As long as racism exists, anything said or done by people that is not intended to help eliminate racism and help to produce justice is a waste of time and energy. Also, I say all through the book, that if there's any problem on this planet among people, you're not going to solve it until you eliminate this phenomenon called white supremacy. I don't care what kind of problem it is. Now, a lot of people say, well, no, the problem is capitalism. Okay, we're mostly into that back in the 1930s and in the 40s and then later in the 1960s. Depends on what you define as capitalism. Some people say the problem, well, is the Soviet bloc. And then you got all kinds of terms that float around like apartheid. You got to watch all the words. What is apartheid? Same thing that I started off talking about, white supremacy. Scrap apartheid, call it white supremacy. I sometimes have talked to Dr. Frances Wilson. Some of you may have seen her on television. I talk to her quite frequently. And... Uh, color theory of press theory of color confrontation and that is we talk about you nail everything down to simple terms that are truthful so you don't get into a lot of abstract terms or terms that mean the same thing like colonialism apartheid neo-colonialism oppression war on poverty affirmative action See, all these myriad of terms, 
civil rights. Stop and think about the term civil rights. All rights are civil. Have you ever heard of an uncivil right? See, they give you terms, the racists do. They give you words that really don't explain anything. This is why when they start, say apartheid, you should say, and this book is supposed to tell you what to do about situations, how to say things, things to say, things not to say, things to do, things not to do. So you start off saying things like white supremacy is racism, racism is white supremacy. Then you say some pretty outlandish things that you can make fit. You can say there's only one race. And then you don't come up with that cliche saying the human race. There's only one race, and that is the white race. Black people do not need to be a member, be members of a race. When did you learn that you were a member of a race? Somebody told you this. You weren't born thinking you were a member of a race. And where did it come from? It came from a white supremacist, because they do the classifying. See, a white supremacist, white supremacist is an awesome force, the most awesome force in the world. Is there a religion that is stronger than white supremacy? No. White supremacy is the strongest religion on this planet. Now, everything that I say, keep up with me now, can be contested and should be. You all should get ready to start shooting stuff at me very shortly. See, because I'm going to say some pretty outlandish things. <laughs> White people, collectively, are the smartest people in the known universe. Now, you like that for apples, okay, to a group like this, see, sitting here among all these African books and whatnot. And among the white people are the white supremacists, and they are smarter than the white people who are not. And they are also the most powerful. And also, white supremacy is the most powerful religion that this world has ever seen. Nothing matches it, not Islam, not Hinduism, Judaism, Voodooism, none of it, Confucianism, none of these religions match the religion of white supremacy, because that's what white supremacy means, it means supreme, it doesn't mean four carloads of skinheads riding down the street shouting nigga this and nigga that. The white supremacists would have you believe that there go the white supremacists. All four carloads of them. <laughs> and other than that, there aren't any. We hear that there might be a couple of dozen in South Africa, but we're taking care of that. But that's who they are. Some of them call themselves Nazis or neo-Nazis. But all together, it's maybe about six or seven hundred of them worldwide. Now, if you believe that, then I got a bridge I want to say. <laughs> okay. Now, but the number is not very large compared to the number of black, brown, red, and yellow people on this planet. But they are still the most powerful people in the known universe at this particular time. And the smartest, because you can't be dumb and run a package like white supremacy on anybody this long. See, don't play them cheap. See, don't build your ego trips up on saying that they ain't nothing. There's something. And if you don't believe it, let them just walk in here and say, this meeting is over. And if you don't think it is, watch me. <laughs> See, that's what the white supremacists do. So you deal with that, and you deal with it in a strategic way. Now, people, Somebody might say, well, this guy, I mean, you know, we're just going around the circle on this one. I wouldn't be bothering to write the book if I didn't think it could be beaten. But you have to do it with strategy. And I think that we start doing what I call codifying it. In other words, that's what these words mean. You unite it, starting with the first one, in what your objective is. Now, the ultimate objective is to produce peace, in quotes. Whatever that is. Because nobody in this room, as far as I would guess, has ever known what that is. See, that's an X factor, like in algebra. Then you say you're united in producing that product. 
Okay, you're independent, meaning you are individuals, individual persons. You can't organize against white supremacy. I'm going to throw that in there. There's no way to do it because they know how to destroy a so-called, so-called, that's what it is, organization. See, there's no such thing as organizing under white supremacy if you're a victim of it. You just interrelate with people, but you're not organizing because that would be a contradiction in what white supremacy is. So you unify. That's what that united is about in your goal. But you're independent because you come and go each day as an independent person. Besides, black people have a thing that we don't want to talk to each other and tell each other what to do anyway. We're not going to listen. And it's too long way around trying to get it that way. See, running around proclaiming that black people love each other, you know, and saying brother and sister. That doesn't work either because it's a facade. It's a whole lot of talk, but it's no substance in it. So we can't wait until we love each other. We have to have a, get to this word down here, code. That's something that you adopt independently. Say, now, we're going to minimize conflicts. I'm not going to wait until I like you, not to even talk about love, because I don't even know the definition of it. Under these conditions, you can't. Under the conditions of white supremacy, there's no way to know what love is. They, not, they do not set up a system, an environment, for you to find out what it's even like. That's a process, a very intricate process of loving somebody. So much so that the word itself is used to mean anything. You say we have sexual intercourse, we call it making love. That's not what you're doing. You can't make love. So you love. But you just don't get in bed with somebody and so start working out and call it love. You got bookstores, most of the ones that you see generally, will have all kinds of shelves of what they call love stories, mostly with white people in them. And this doesn't tell you very much either. So you just throw all that out. See, and you say what you do, getting to the words now, is minimize conflict. And how do you do that? Minimize contact. See, black people got this thing about we got to get together. Most things when black people do when they get together start fighting. Now, you know that even if you try to get an organization together. By the time you get five people together, you got conflict because it's built into us to have conflict. So you start knowing this in front. So you head all that off before it gets started. So that way you start floating free, you might say, and I, I don't like that word free, but you just start floating as individuals, you might say. But you have it in your mind. Now, there is a black person, another victim over there. And my goal in this particular setting is to minimize conflict with that individual. Meaning what? The only time I'll say something to another black person is when it has constructive value. Otherwise, I don't have no business talking to you. Black people got to get in the habit, get out of that old traditional habit of just running their mouths with each other. Because pretty soon we run right into something that leads to an argument. Start off talking about a football game that happened last week and wind up it being a shootout. And the next thing you know, right this minute, all over the northwestern hemisphere, right this minute, you got that telltale symbol of the blinking light everywhere you got black people. Mostly because black people are out here killing each other, usually about some silly argument about a football game or an argument about a female or you owe me some money and most recently about crack cocaine fighting over poison that the races have put here so you minimize contact and you minimize conflict now these are this is what you call codified language it's very difficult to have conflict with somebody that you are not in contact with you have an argument under the same roof, all that needs to happen to resolve that before you have to call somebody in one of those cars 